Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, now we're moving on to other issues uh, that of course are coming up on, on our plate this morning. Um, one of the biggest discussions that Nigeria has had in the last 24 hours is with regards security. The news of the death of, the government says, 43, or, um, other sources say as much as 110 uh, farmers in Borno State, Nigeria, has created a lot of conversations, and there's numerous angles to this conversation. Spokesperson to the uh, presidency, uh, Garba Shehu, also was in the news yesterday saying that the farmers didn't get clearance from the government before they went out there. And of course, uh, the governor um, of Borno State, uh, Zulum, also is in the news uh, for saying that uh, the government maybe needs to reach out to mercenaries uh, to help in the fight against insurgency. We've invited this morning Captain Bish Johnson, uh, who's joining us from Abuja, and of course uh, Chidi Omeje also, both security experts, to discuss these issues. Thank you both for your time this morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me too. All right, I'll start with Captain Johnson now. Um, the, the, the statement uh, from Garda Pashiru has been eliciting a lot of reaction. We'll talk about those reactions later. But I want to look at the comments that he made and ask your perspective on, did these farmers willfully put themselves in danger for a meal? If yes, what does this say? about the desperation and the level of poverty in that environment? Well, first and foremost, thank you for having me on your program this morning. I'm glad to be here. It's okay. And to add my voice to the ongoing conversation. Now, let me be very clear on this. When you have a situation where every Nigerian, particularly those who live in the Northeast, we have to seek for clearance to be able to go about their normal daily living. That is catastrophic for this country. Catastrophic in the sense that it means that Nigeria has actually lost that part of the country. If they have to seek clearance from military authorities to go to their farms, to visit law, to do anything. So, the statement from the sport. Okay, I, I think, um, Mr. Major, if you can take it up from there, what is your thinking? Um, did these people willfully put themselves in danger, like the government is saying? And what does this say about the level of hunger in that environment? Is that for me? Yes, I just pick up from where he stopped. His network uh, got hazy. Okay, fine. I think, look, look at my perspective here. I think the, the what the man wanted to say came out rather, you know, uh, poorly. I think the word he, he ought to be used is not uh, clearance. I understand perfectly well that Nigerians are grieving and, uh, they, I mean, uh, tempers are very high. Uh, and um, we are actually interested in interrogating every every statement from, from, from the presidency. But the actual fact is that there, there's a, what we call state of emergency still active in the Northeast as we talk. That particular region of the country is still under, I mean, there's war ongoing. You can call it as metrical warfare, but warfare, there's war ongoing. So I think that, you know, what the man was trying to say, or should have said, is that the farmers ought to have gotten assurance from the military to say that, look, you are safe enough to carry out this kind of social economic activity. You know, it, 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 you have to understand that it's not a normal time in that particular region. There's a state of emergency, and the military is in charge of ordinary law and order that, you know, the law, the, the civil police ought to have been in charge of. But because there's a state of emergency, because there's a military action, military operation ongoing there, there's always a need for the civil population to get assurance from the military to, to ensure that their safety is guaranteed. But that's not to say that, uh, you know, uh, it should be an ideal thing. I mean, 
we Nigerians, especially those people out there, our compatriots out there, they deserve to have some respite. I mean, they are not going to starve forever. They are going to engage in social economic activity, and it behoves on the government and, of course, the military forces to give them that particular cover. But I, you know, ordinarily, if not for the fact that uh, Nigerians have had it up to their neck, if we sit down to interrogate that statement from Garuba, what would have, what should be the problem is the semantics. It shouldn't have said clearance, but assurance from the military, right. because it's the military that is in charge of everything, both law and order. But uh, almost, uh, that, let, let, let me tell you, if not the fact that you know the uh, the benevolence of uh, Jonathan, because Jonathan who actually put in place that type of emergency, but he did not take away. You know the 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 govern you know the, the the government from the civilian authority. In, in the time, uh, what do you call him, uh, Boss Anjo? If he declares state of emergency in a particular state, you see that the governor, the, the entire government structure will be handled by the military. So in this case, even though there is a state of emergency in uh, in that region, you still have you know civil governance going on. But it behoves on the people to ensure. That uh, our, you know, um, long-suffering compatriots in that area, a great lease of life. That's what I think about it. I'm, I'm going to go to. I'm not sure if we have uh, Captain Bish uh, clearly now. Um, if you're still with us, I I, I want to ask, um, you know, from another angle. Uh, um, of course, uh, the, the Minister of Information, I believe, uh, was also quoted um, yesterday saying that citizens refuse to share information with the Nigerian army. Um, I saw, yes, late last night, a video... I mean, the defense um, headquarters, um, um, headquarters, I beg your pardon. Um, I saw a video late last night of uh, one of the residents in that area that said that the farmers know these um, insurgents um, and they had been helping them over time to carry their weapons. It's not confirmed it was from a resident, um, so I can't necessarily uh, quote him, you know, and uh, you know, take his uh, word um, 100%. But what he was saying was that the farmers have been helping the insurgents to carry weapons, to carry their goods here and there, and they had been assured by the insurgents that they would not be armed. Um, so he's not sure what exactly went wrong in the last uh, 48 hours. Um, it, it, it somehow, some way then... Um, dispels the narrative that the Boko Haram are faceless individuals and the army doesn't know who they are and it's difficult to identify them. Um, so, Captain Bish, I want your, your thoughts on information sharing with the Nigerian army. How much help will that bring to the fight against insurgency? And why do you think that the defense headquarters um, says, uh, or says rather, that the residents don't share information with the army? Okay, uh, before, I think I was on my first thought before I was cut off due to, I, I presume, bad network. Yes. yes. Look, uh, I don't care what you call it, whether it's a clearance or assurance. Uh, I don't think that any Nigerian needs to get either clearance or assurance to go about their daily living. It is the responsibility of the government to protect lives and property. And when the government fails in doing that, and the citizens have to go to seek for clearance, and assurance, it means that the government has completely failed. And in this case, they have failed. It's not today that we heard from this same very government that is asking for clearance and assurances, whatever you want to call it, that Boko Haram has been technically defeated. If Boko Haram has been technically defeated, as the government has said over and over again. Nobody should seek clearance or assurance to go to his or her farm. So having said that, let me get to your question. Now, that has always been a problem. Uh, fighting this insurgency and other uh, criminality in the land is problem of intelligence and information sharing between those who are charged with the responsibility of uh, uh, prosecuting our security operations in this country. And there are so many factors why the citizens are reluctant to share information with law enforcement or security personnel. One of it is that they don't have confidence in these security agencies. They don't trust them. Yes. So as long as that uh, trust gap or credibility gap still exists between the citizens and those uh, law enforcement and security personnel, they will find it difficult to share that intelligence information with them. Now, why do they have that trust issue with them? First and foremost, they are not guaranteed of their protection. They are not guaranteed of their safety. Um, you can share information today 
and tomorrow that person's identity could be leaked out to the book uh, to the terrorist and the person be dead so why take that risk that is one factor another factor is that they themselves the security operatives uh, have not made it any easier for people to be able to share intelligence information with them. If you have intelligence information of a planned terrorist attack somewhere, how do you relate to the army? There's no one specific, easy, simple to remember number that anyone can call and somebody will pick up that call and take the information from you. They just have multiple phone numbers that are most of the times confusing, even for those of us who are educated, Nonetheless, the rural, uneducated farmers and villagers who are in this part of the country. So all these complicities are the reasons why it has been very difficult for citizens to share information with security and law enforcement operatives. Uh, it's, right. They start today. We have been hammering on that point for, for years now. And uh, so far, I, I don't see any reasonable effort on the part of the security and law enforcement agents to make it any easier. For All citizens right. to contact them and report, uh, give them. Let, let's go back to Mr. Omeje. Uh, Mr. Omeje, I want to ask you about um, another aspect of the um, comment from the presidency. This time, the Senate President Ahmed Lawan representing the president in uh, condolence visits to the people of Borono State, said that the president has issued another order asking the military to root out the insurgents from all their hideouts and exterminate them. Now, this is not a phrase that is unfamiliar with all of us. From your perspective, as somebody who is a security expert, these comments that come sounding so authoritative but doesn't seem effective, isn't it time government reframe practically from making comments that will only inflame the sentiment of anger against the government? Mr. Major, oh, the question well, is for you. Um, let, let me just uh, say this before I, I get to the question. Look, um, you see, we have to understand that what is going on in uh, Borno State, Yobe State, and Adamawa State uh, is actually war. There's war ongoing. It's not a normal situation. So when I would say that there's a need for citizens to get assurance, it does not mean that we don't understand the fact that every Nigerian deserves a right to move around. But you have an abnormal situation. You are fighting a war. So if you, if you don't want to be on the harm's way, you have to get assurance. It's not as safe as the policing state. But that's just about that. Back to your question. Well, um, you know, uh, the art of statecraft is something that uh, we have to take time to study. I, I do not understand this idea of every time uh, we have issues, we have attacks, the president comes up to say, um, I charge you to do this. I, I mean, wouldn't the, the, the military guys ought to have done what they're supposed to do without the, such a um, charge from the presidency? So to me, um, what should be important for us is to see how we can uh, re-strategize to ensure that we take the word to them. Yes, Nigerians expect that much because... We, we we are almost about tired, you know, you know, seeing a situation where these guys will, you know, sneak in and then wreak havoc in our communities and then, you know, get our go to God knows where. Uh, and what, another important thing to me is that we need to strengthen an alliance or rather a cooperation between our country and the neighboring, you know, uh, countries. I mean, those like Chad uh, countries, talking about Chad, Nigeria, and, uh, and, and Cameroon. Because it, it does appear to me that these guys who come from there, from their, from their, you know, their hideouts in some of these countries, wreck havoc in our country and sleeping back. So it means that we are not having a very effective partnership within that like region. So um, to me, I believe that this whole situation will come to uh, an end sometime. But there is a need on our part as a country to rededicate ourselves, even on the part of the of, of citizens. Of, uh, citizens. There is a need for us to actually deliberately keep supporting our, our troops to ensure that they are fighting morale, I mean, fighting spirit at all, and their morals are high at all times. So I believe that, uh, you know, it's not it's becoming like a, a broken record hearing from the presidency, uh, take the fight to them, do that, do that. No, we want to see results this time around because uh, Nigeria deserves to have 
a positive right. result this time around. Um, thank you, Mr. Almeja. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you know a lot of people would agree with you know uh, low morale or fighting spirit as one of the reasons we're not winning this war. Anybody who is in the front lines of the um, in the battle against insurgency must have um, some morale to be there in the first place. But um, one of the things that you mentioned, of course, is once again taking the fight to them. And, um, you know, we need to re-energize and um, reinforce our commitments and our partnerships with neighboring countries. I'm sure that we've also heard about these things before. The president has met with, you know, um, um, presidents and security advisors from other countries you know, numerous times. Um, Captain Bish, I, I want your, your um, thoughts on this. Um, one of the things that a lot of people have also said is a tactical way of, the, of, um, of defeating insurgency is cutting off their funding, finding out who is sponsoring these, um, you know, these uh, insurgents, uh, stopping their flow of arms and, and um, you know, stopping weapons from getting to them. How well do you think we've been able to do with that um, aspect, Captain Bish Johnson? And what, you know, in what ways may we, may we also have failed in being able to know who is funding these insurgents and who's giving them weapons? Okay. Uh, first and foremost, before I answer this question, let me go back to this issue of the fact that uh, there's an ongoing war uh, in the Northeast. Therefore, people cannot have uh, uh, their daily living. Look, I've been in war. So when people talk about war, you're talking to somebody who is battle-tested somebody who served in war zone, you don't shut down the entire society because you are at war. If people cannot fend themselves because you declared war in their area, you must evacuate them. Evacuate the people and put all of them in IDP camps and you feed them, if that is the intent. When we fought war in Afghanistan and Iraq, we didn't shut down their daily living. People were still able to go to their farms. It's your responsibility to ensure that they are protected and that they are safe to go about their normal living. Okay. Now, having said that, let me come to that, uh, your question. Now, your question is, have, how far have we done in trying to dismantle? Because this terrorist is a, is, is a chain. You know, you have those who support them. You have those who provide sanctuary for them. You have those who supply them weapons. And you have those who actually fund them. Now, for you to be able to do well in dismantling any terrorist organization, you can take them from any one of those legs. Either you isolate them from their supporters, which is what appears to be what the government is saying, that the farmers carry weapons for Boko Haram, so they're their supporters. So you have to do a much better job trying to isolate the terrorist organization from those who support them, which we have not done very well. Another thing you can do is to, uh, uh, to discover where their funding is coming from and be able to shut it down. We haven't done that very well. You saw the one that happened in the United Arab Emirates, where they were able to arrest some Nigerians for terrorist funding. We have not seen such similar cases here in Nigeria, where people have been arrested for funding uh, Boko Haram. Uh, so it tells us that we are equally not performing very well in that aspect. Now, there are people that provide sanctuaries for them, because these people don't exist in space. They are not aliens. They are humans like you and I. So they will live a normal life, just like you and I do. They will look for sanctuary, they will feed, and they will do all sorts of things. So we haven't been able to discover those sanctuaries and be able to uh, dismantle those sanctuaries, and that's why it seems that they are flourishing. So the, right. the, time the, the, and apologies. time, parameter after parameter, we have failed to be able to dislodge the link, and that is why you see the, 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 the terrorist activities flourishing in the manner that they are today, even when we have said that they have been technically defeated. Captain Bish, would, would you say then that the Nigerian government doesn't have full control of its borders um, against uh, proliferation of, uh, of weapons? Be because the Boko Haram don't produce their weapons. The insurgents don't manufacture their weapons in Borno State. So they keep coming into the country. The, the ammunition and, and all that they use um, comes into Nigeria as often as they need it, I believe. So, I was saying earlier that we have a, a, a trust deficit, we have a lot of dishonesty that might also have led to, us to where we are today, because there's no honesty with the fight against insurgency. Why is it difficult for us to cut off the, their supply of weapons? 
Well, okay, one of, the, one of the main reasons why it's difficult is because there are people who are benefiting from the status quo, okay? These people who are benefiting from the status quo, who are making a hell of money. Terrorism has become like another sector, money-making sector in this country that people are making huge money off of, even at the detriment of the life of their fellow citizens. So those people will fight tooth and nail to ensure that the status quo continues because that's how they make their money. That's one point. At another point, look, I've said this issue of our uh, security. Our borders are in total chaos and very, very, very porous. And to the extent that they remain as porous as they are, we will continue to have issue of insecurity, particularly in those northern segments of our borders. I've said this on several platforms and on several networks. Um, if we really, really, and we are serious about dealing with the security challenges we have in this country, one of the areas that we have to take very, very serious is our border security. All As right. it stands Let's right now, in, there are over 1,000 illegal border crossings just only in the northern segment of our country. And if you look at the uh, border directorate of the immigrations, there are only 32 manpower personnel in that directorate, grossly insufficient to police right. the borders. Also, um, we don't know what Mr. is coming um, to our country. Captain Johnson, um, let's uh, pause a bit and bring in Mr. Omeje. I, I, I want to still talking funding, um, this time not illicit funding. Uh, the governor of uh, Boronu State, uh, Governor Zulum, has uh, called on the National Assembly to increase uh, budgetary allocation uh, to the North East. According to him, the, uh, let me see the amounts now, uh, 45 billion uh, naira that was appropriated for capital projects in the North East is insufficient. Um, is it a problem of insufficient budgetary allocation? Is this one way that the issue of insurgency can be addressed in the Northeast? Hey, hey, is that question for me or for Chidi? For Chidi. Um, for Mr. Chidi, uh, Chidi or Meje. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, all right, I got, I, I got you. So um, I think that uh, issue of budgets and all that is, uh, to me, is not really what we should be talking about now because I know that we have what we call North East uh, development commission and all that there are some there are other extra budgetary things that have sent that have been that have been uh, mapped out for that particular region the important thing is how do we deploy even the little ones that uh, we, that, that they have there so um to me if if the not east people uh, i mean if the governor is insisting that there's there a need for them to have a budgetary increment in their region we have to ask ask them what are they what have they done with the ones they've been looking to them uh, the, well, I think where the funding should go right now is uh, is our military. We need to ensure that we have more boots on the ground. We need to ensure that we have enough fund for adequate training, for uh, 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 adequate uh, equipment of our troops. Uh, if you don't have do all these... No, let me tell you, from your comments, what we have Mr. now Mejie, in the entire North East um, is not... Is not I, I want to infer, I think, I think you made a point already, but I, I want to infer from your statement that... Um, you subscribe to his suggestion that more youths should be um, put in the uh, civilian uh, uh, JTF. It, it, am I getting that right? Is that a sentiment yeah. you share? No, no, yeah. He made the it was part of the request he made. He, he actually requested that the federal government you know, should be able to uh, uh, recruit, uh, that what? To recruit, recruit more, more you that civilian, those civilian JTF to be part of the operation in the northeast. That is very, that is very okay because uh, it actually there's a need to have much more uh, boots on the ground. Even if uh, the troops liberate a particular area, there's a need to hold ground for whichever well, uh, ground that the troops have liberated. So in that case, there's a need for 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 the, for, for the government to actually recruit a, not a lot of these young guys who are actually ready. They are ready. To help their people, so to me, whatever funds that they are asking for should be, you know, should be channeled to bringing more hands, bringing more boots on the ground, training them so that they can help the military. So that any time the the, the 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 troop liberate a particular community, we should have enough people to hold ground. I am very sure that if we had enough, you know, people on ground <laughs> in that particular place, that these guys came to massacre our people there, probably wouldn't have happened. But because that the, the, the military. Well, I really very not much. They're not adequate. Once they liberate the particular area, they have to move at another place. Living back, living, living the area they have just liberated, 
you know, open and susceptible to all attacks. So, to me, I was asking for, should be channeled to increasing the boots on the ground to ensure that the, the, the troops are supported, not just, you know, by, by you know, by me, you know, uh, chanting about it, but we need to see this on ground. We, That's we, what I think about it. All right, Captain Bishop, I'm bringing you in next. We are currently, now we're talking about more men on ground, more boots. Um, of course, I'm sure that everyone is aware also that we have other military operations going on across the country, in different parts of the country that may have overstretched um, our military. Um, but I, I, um, I want you to speak on the uh, possibility, and uh, I think it was uh, uh, the Borno State Governor who also uh, said this, that we need mercenaries um, to help in the fight against insurgency. You've been in wars before, like you um, earlier mentioned. Uh, do you agree with him that maybe we need to hire foreign mercenaries to assist the Nigerian army? And second is, is there a possibility that there are saboteurs um, in, you know, our security space that may be, you know, causing uh, these holes here and there in, in fighting insurgency? All right, uh, Chidi Omej, I think you can take that, you can take that question. Yes, I, I, yes, I, you know, at, at this stage, at this point in time, I think there's a need for us to think beyond, you know, this uh, whole idea of, you know, we can do it alone. In this modern modern world, uh, countries even as big as United States of America they have alliances. They have other nations supporting them in times like this. So I, I, I subscribe to the idea that time has come for us to seek for some kind of partnership, wherever it's coming from, to ensure that we get this, uh, you know, uh, out and done with. And the first step to actually do is to like I said before, to, to strengthen the partnership within the Lakeport region to ensure that, you know, uh, that Chad, for instance, stop, be, stop being a sanctuary for these terrorists. Because it's very clear that most of the times these guys come from Chad axis to attack our country and move in there. So these, these are the issues we need to spell out clearly that we have, have we strengthened this partnership to ensure that everybody comes to the table with open hands to ensure that this is gone. So I subscribe. Look, look, let us remember that uh, in, a, in a time, around 2014, 2015, or thereabout, we had, we, we read that there was a, some kind of um, help we were getting from the South African missionaries. Yes. Nothing wrong with that, if you ask me. Yeah, the important thing is let's I get results. That contract was canceled. Our people also. that exist are going through a lot, and whatever it takes to bring peace, to bring stability, we must go for it. This is not time for, you know, you know, for a pride and arrogance. This is time to ensure that we stop this. Because, look, every every part of the country is, is now is a flank for all manner of, uh, you know, and so, and so, uh, all right, let me quickly interject. I want to get your perspective on this. Um, we have uh, less than uh, two minutes to talk on this. Uh, there is reaction uh, from a tweet uh, by the vice president from 2015 uh, before they got into office. I want to get your perspective on the sentiment being expressed now. Um, in, in February 2015, um, Oshiba Njo, during the campaign, tweeted that if the president says, I have lost the capacity to guarantee the security of lives and property, it's certainly an impeachable offense. Now that we have a scenario, people are saying, you said this in 2015. Why are you both still in power? Is that a solution um, we could consider at this time? Is, is this for me? Okay, I think um, we have Mr. Uh, Captain uh, Johnson back. Go yeah. ahead then and take it on. Okay. If you can do it in, in, in 40 seconds, we'll be up. We're, we're out of time. Okay. I go to, can, can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can. Yes, we can. can. Can you hear me? We can't yes, go we ahead. Can. Well, before I go on that, let me talk about issue of funding for our military. You, you have 40 Look, seconds, sir. Uh, you have 40, 40 seconds. Time, I, I don't think that uh, funding is, is, is... Okay. I, okay. I, I, let, let me... Okay. You want me to go direct to the question? All yes, right. Yes. Um, Look, uh, that is not the only promises that this government uh, <laughs> has made when they were campaigning that they have not been able to fulfill. Uh, you need to understand that this particular administration won the election in 2015 on the ground that they want, they were going to uh, curb corruption, they were going to rebuild the economy, and they were going to improve our security. And if you look at the very three indexes that, that they promised during their campaigning, you discover that they have been uh, unable to achieve either one or 
Okay, I think we've lost him again. Um, in the next uh, 20 seconds, uh, Mr. Moje, if you can, uh, could you speak on that? Uh, he says it's an impeachable offense if you can't guarantee security in 2015 or in 2020. Mr. Moje, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, in, in 20 seconds, if you can, your quick thoughts on the reactions. Now, they went to dig up his old tweet. I want you to react to it. Yeah, well, you see, that is why it's always good to, you know, to hold these guys to account. Because when politicians come to talk about a lot of things, you think that they have, um, you know, magic uh, one to take care of situations. I remember quite well, you know, you know, before 2015, how this current government, uh, you know, when they were in opposition, how they were bombarding Nigerians with a lot of promises, or you know how they were attacking the, the, the then government, and you know what you can see that the whole thing is is going back. What comes around goes around. So. Uh, uh, what can I say? It's, uh, it's just an indictment. It's just to show that politicians are not trusted, that we, we just have to... All right. you know, uh, as a, let, as a, let's as not... Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chidio Meje, for joining us on The Breakfast. And, of course, Captain Bitch Johnson, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Breakfast, that was Captain. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the network it hasn't been nice uh, to us this Thank morning, but at least we're able to uh, get uh, some things that they were saying. I I'll just say this off um, um, the part of this conversation. This one stuck out for me. Uh, communication is very important. Um, sometimes we don't take it as seriously as we should. The media age to the government is alluded, I think, by Mr. Omeje, said the importance of framing to accommodate the, uh, this is me um, rephrasing what he said now, the prevalent sentiment at the time. The sentiment at this time is high. People are angry, they're saddened, they're disgusted by the continued killing. So the framing of comments from the government must take this into consideration. Otherwise, you will get this continuous backlash. The CSOs are saying that it's insensitive. The PDP is on the attack saying that they made so much promises and now this is um, it. So instead of exposing um, the government to continuous uh, ridicule like this, they should get the services of people who can actually do proper framing that captures the but sentiment no matter, of the time. No matter how you try to frame it, people are dead. There's no, no matter how much you know, better publicity that you're able to You're to speaking recruit, to the leaving. People are you're still taking, dead. You have to acknowledge. Like, no, what I'm say, no, understand what I'm saying. No matter how great your, your publicity is, mm -hmm. if you're not being able to save lives, it wouldn't matter at some point. I, I, I really want you know, the Nigerian government, for once, to take responsibility and say, we have failed. We did poorly. We have failed with honesty. We have failed with, with funding. We have failed with our tactics. We have failed now, with our you, policies. Yes, you, you tell me I'm the one that is idealistic. No, Do you but, expect no. that to happen but in this I, country? I don't like, I, I, but it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why these things may never end because they will never take responsibility. And every time there's a disaster like this, the aides to the government always have, Minutes. you know, well, like you and said, they, they always have a, a, a perspective that doesn't work. All right, work. We're, we're out of <laughs> <laughs> also, if you're going to be hiring mercenaries, I'm going to tell you the Nigerian angle to hiring mercenaries. It's going to be another cash cow. You're going to, you know, add to the budget another 700 billion naira to pay off mercenaries that you probably hired for 10 million. That's that's the Nigerian story. Not unfortunately, that's our reality. But of course, we have this conversation in the hope that we'll bring out the issues and those that are capable that can apply uh, the suggestion made. We'll take that into consideration. Hello. Well, Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.